So in digital painting, the most important thing is how you set up your files so that you can work efficiently and creatively and not get hung up by the tools or by changing tools all the time. So that's why I create a rather large reference image. And I do it kind of as a long vertical. And then I open up my photo P and I set it at the, the size I want. So 11 by 14 by 350. And then I drag and drop in my just flattened JPEG right into the file. And then I'm going to shrink it up into the corner. So I'm going to do Option Command T to free transform and then just shrink it into the corner. So it's not very big at all. This is where my portrait's going to go. This is my canvas. This is like my little photo reference that I've clipped up to my wall or up into the upper right hand corner of my canvas. If I like, I can open up a picture like this one, for instance, which is higher res. I can crop it down, get Natalie Portman out of there. I think Natalie Portman's going to play her in an upcoming biopic. Yeah. And then, just like we did when we were doing our GIF animation, I could keep, just keep an image open in preview off to the corner like this in a different program that I can reference if I need to. But within the program itself, I want to kind of organize my space so I have a lot of space just for painting. And this is all in Photo P in the free browser-based freeware. Okay, now the next step, if we look at the directions, is I can either sketch it out or I can just start working with brushes. So I'm going to start by sketching it out a little bit. And here's a little trick that is pretty helpful that a lot of people overuse, but I do it this way. I zoom in so it's really low res, and I'm going to work by doing what's called rotoscoping on top of one photo, just to get me some basic shapes to begin with. So this is the way I discipline myself. I label the background blank white, and then I lock it. Because remember, we just want a white background. And I don't want to be able to accidentally paint on that. And then my references, I can label if, if I like, and then I can lock that, right? And now I'm going to do a sketch on top of my reference. So. The sketch, I'm just going to use a really simple brush. Let's just put it on its defaults. Use the brush tool. We mostly just use the brush as black for digital inking with pressure sensitivity. So that's what it is right now. But I'm going to break it up a little bit because something you'll see with digital painting is that the edges of the marks are usually not as clean as with digital coloring the edges will be more broken up, just like from a real paintbrush. And that helps mix the color. It helps give you softer edges. Like you see that. Almost like it's done with a sponge. So we're going to look at some of the ways we can customize our brushes. And we've talked about this a little bit before. But one simple way is to use some of the defaults that aren't the standards. right? So I liked this one. It's, it's just a slightly off shape. So if I paint it, it looks like that, right? It doesn't really give names in Photo P for the defaults. It's just the, the one in the upper right hand corner. Ah, there you go. It's round, noisy marker. <laughs> so if I'm using that one, 
I don't need to just use it as it is, right? I can make it pressure sensitive instead of opacity sensitive or pressure sensitive for scale rather than opacity. I can play with its size, but just like any custom brush, I can't play with its hardness. And I'm going to do a few more things with it. If you go to brush settings, which is under window, under brush, and you can also see it here under this little side tab, you'll have these different brush settings. So tip dynamics, this is the thing I like to play with. I like to jitter the size and make it controllable by pin pressure. That means even at the same pressure, it won't always be the exact same size. It will vary it a little bit. I like to vary the angle quite a bit so that it's never repeating itself at the exact same angle, just like a regular brush would. I like to adjust the roundness a little bit. That's just how it's smoothing at the edges. And then I showed you scatter, right? I'm going to just scatter it a tiny bit with less count. And then I'm going to vary the count. So sometimes it's heavier and sometimes it's lighter. Then there's transfer. Transfer is what's giving it that, that separate opacity. If you don't have it, it's all going to be just solid. I think this is good for what I'm doing right now, which is just sketching. So I'm going to turn transfer off. Right? But I'm going to set the brush to be quite a bit smaller. So now that's basically like a pencil or a pretty soft piece of charcoal. Right? Now this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to sketch, but I'm going to sketch with a, a strange color. I'm going to use fluorescent pink. So I'm going to hold down Option with the brush and use it. And then I'm going to zoom in on this very low res, and I'm just going to do a little basic shape sketch, just really lightly. And I'll usually take my opacity down a little bit, like to 60 or 70. And I'm just going to really lightly kind of map the structures of her face. This keeps me from being from tracing too much, you know? But this is called rotoscoping, when you work right on top of a photo. But it's on its own layer. If I want to tighten it up, I just have to press a little bit lighter to get that thinner line. And you'll start to get used to these more shape-based brushes. Now I'm trying to use basic shapes here, like we did when we did our, our creature design. Just wedges, ovals, circles. So it looks something like that. Give her a little bit more of a hairline here. And then frame up the side of her head. But I just traced right over. It's pretty easy. But you can try that a few times. What's nice about that is you can turn it off and you see, okay, yeah, that doesn't look like her. But it tells me where the nose goes, where the mouth goes, the length of the face, the shape of the face, the height of the neck, all that kind of thing. And now what I do is I'm going to move that sketch to my main painting area. I'm going to select it. There we go. I can turn off the brush for now. And now I'm going to make it much, much bigger, which what is that going to do to my pixels? If I do Option Command T to free transform it, and then I make it the size I want to print or I want to paint. It's going to soften those pixels edges, right? Because the, pr the brush is pretty direct. So now this is going to be kind of nice and soft. See that? It's just kind of a guideline. Those of you who paint traditionally, maybe you use willow charcoal or vine charcoal. You know, that's a kind of a traditional way to sketch on canvas for an oil painting. And that's just a really soft edged, kind of cloudy light line that you put on. 
I can even erase, but this will be kind of the last time I use the eraser, just to tighten up the sketch a little bit. Get rid of stray lines. And anything that was a little too strong. So this gives me kind of my parameters. Now, now it's all about how do I build it up. Kind of, I can use flat base colors. I can use multiple kind of textured colors. And I tend to work from the middle tones out. So a few tips for that, and you can do it any way you like, is on top of my blank white background, I make a duplicate, and then I fill that with middle gray. At 100%. And now... I can see where the highlights are. And now I'm going to lock my sketch. And on top of my sketch, I'm going to start putting what I call my base color in. It's not flat color. It's just the base layer of painting. Now I'm going to use my brush again. And this time I'm going to change the brush setting and turn on my transfer, which is going to play with my opacity. I'm going to jitter the opacity a little bit and jitter my flow a little bit. And I'm not going to set it on any kind of control. It's just going to kind of randomly happen. And you'll see how that affects my brush. So let's pick a bright color from my references. Again, you just hold down Option to steal a color. And I'm going to make my brush quite a bit bigger now. And her forehead's pretty bright especially along her nose. I'm going to tighten this brush up a little bit. Remember, you can adjust these brush settings. Next class, first thing I'll do is show you how we can customize our own brush. But it's good to get used to just one that's already in the, bless you, in the program first. So I'm going to Take that jitter down on the position, just so it's a little bit easier to control. There we go. And I'm at about 60% opacity. I can take that up really to almost 100% or 90 just for my base color. Because I basically, I don't want any of that fuchsia sketch showing through. I want to make sure I kind of cover it. So this is the kill whitey phase for me in digital painting. Except I'm trying to working on gray and get everything filled in. And instead of just using flat colors, I'm going to start using some of these crazy colors. Some of them are more middle tones. Some of them are, are brighter. If you're going to put this into kind of a painting style, this would be what's called Fauvist. It's a French Expressionist style. Like Matisse, about the joy of life. And sure, there'll be some skin color in there too. But I'm really just trying to block out the shapes. What I want you to not do is just... If your person has brown hair, you just paint it with a brown color. It's like a big flat brown. You can be a little bit more experimental with it. And you definitely don't want to just paint over it all with black, like black outlines. Notice I'm also not going to do her glasses until after I've done her portrait without glasses. Now you can, there are some digital artists that just rotoscope their whole painting right on top of a photo. But to me, that, that just makes everything look the same. It makes it all look like the photo. And I'm not as interested in that. And the only tool we're going to use is that paintbrush. And just hold it. My finger is hovering over Option just to steal colors from my reference, stealing them from myself. But for this base color, I'm not really mixing colors. I'm just filling it in.